My name is Alicia English and welcome back to my channel. Today we are starting a brand new Trash to Treasure series. The Mystery Box Challenge. During this series, I'm going to test my creativity for the Ultimate Upcycle Challenge. I'm going to take everyday items and turn them into amazing home decor pieces anyone would want in their home. So since the box is supposed to be a mystery, I reached out to Philip's cousin Stephanie who gave me the supply list for my first mystery box. I then was able to put the items together. Stephanie decided on a theme for this first box, found in your dad's garage. So we looked at all the items we could think of that would be found literally in every dad's garage and put together what looks like a pile of nothing. The challenge here is, can I turn this pile of nothing into a pile of amazing somethings? So that is the ultimate upcycle challenge. Let's get started. Let's take a look at our mystery items for this challenge. So the first thing I think of personally was actually in this pile. She really hit the nail on the head when she thought of the list of items found in her dad's garage. And I've seen her dad's garage and there's some miscellaneous items in there. But I'm pretty sure that in every dad's garage there's going to be miscellaneous paint stir sticks. So we have some that look like they've been well loved from the garage floor. Some empty coffee tin cans. Every dad stores bolts, nuts and screws in old coffee tins in the garage. So I'm pretty sure those are going to be pretty useful old terracotta pots pretty much found in every garage some wood clamps are always found in various sizes in garages empty plastic screw containers what on earth am i going to do with those scrap wood duct tape every garage has duct tape and we also have some string jute and a painter's drop cloth oh and last but not least these are always being swept up on our garage floor but little tile spacers Oh my goodness. Okay, this really is the ultimate challenge because I now need to turn this pile of nothing into something. I think the first thing that I'm gonna use is going to be the drop sheet, the jute, and the paint stir sticks because I have an idea right off the bat for those. So I think I'm gonna start simple first and then really challenge myself with the next. So I think I can probably create, I'm gonna try out of these supplies to make five different DIY projects. By the way, before we get started, if you're new here, make sure you hit on the right hand side of the screen, the subscribe button if you like upcycled trash to treasure content. For the first DIY project, I use these paint stir sticks, but because they had a lot of paint and a lot of tarnished stuff on them, I wanted to give them a really good sanding to get some of that off before I applied the stain. I applied the stain using a little foam brush. I did a Minwax wood finishing stain this one was just a pine color and I knew that once I rubbed the actual wood painter sticks that they would really be pretty faded and I could distress them if I wanted to to make them look a little bit aged. Now that my painted stir sticks are all stained, I'm going to actually measure them and see how long they are to know how big I want this piece of wall art to be. So they're approximately 12 inches, so I definitely know that I want my fabric that I'm going to cut to be about 10 inches, maybe even 11 inches here. So I'm going to measure and cut that. I'm just gonna use a pencil because you won't see it at the end and measure my way all the way down so that I can make a straight little banner piece of cloth. I then used my fabric scissors. If you want to do the extra step of doing a nice seam edge with your sewing machine, that would be a nice added touch. I then ironed it on my tabletop iron board here to be able to make sure the drop sheet was really smooth. I used my Silhouette Cameo to create a phrase on contact paper, a great way to save money when working on vinyl projects. I then transferred the image on by weeding out my letters and using a little bit of black paint and a makeup sponge to apply my image. The next part is the rewarding part where you get to sponge it all on and then peel off the vinyl. Peeling off the vinyl is always the best part. I then used my drill by doubling up two of the painter stir sticks. This was going to give me the top and the bottom of my banner sign. Then I was able to glue it onto my fabric and create this little sign, pulling my jute through and tying a knot on the end to create a hanger. I think DIY number one turned out really cute with those paint sticks, the paint drop cloth, and the jute for this project. Next project I'm gonna do is project number two, and that's gonna be using the coffee tins, the scrap wood, and the jute. Let's see what we make with project number two. First, I wanted to make sure that I could create two circles to cut out later. I wanted to be able to cut on the outside of the line to make sure that my lids I was going to create wouldn't fall through into the coffee canister. Then I removed all of the packaging because I was going to spray paint these so I didn't want the label on. I chose two different colors of Rust-Oleum spray paint, one in a soft gray and one in a soft blue. Then I used my scroll saw to cut out those circles I was talking about to create some lids. 
I gave them a really light sanding and then applied some stain to give them a finished look. I made sure to wipe off all of the stain and then what I did was I drilled a little hole and made sure that my drill bit was just wide enough to be able to fit the jute through to create a little textured handle for the top of my new wood canister jars. I really thought that adding this texture would really give them a really nice look at the end with the blue gray paint that I chose and this orangish colored stain. I love how these cute little storage containers turned out. I love the mixture of the oranges kind of stain with the blue. I'm really into the blue and orange right now. And I love the texture of the little jute tassel that I put on the top. You cannot see it from the bottom because it goes into the jar and it won't disturb anything. So I think these would be so cute on some open shelving in my art studio or even with some cute little things in it in the bathroom. You could even just stage it up and lean one of the lids and it would be really adorable. So now let's go on to project number three. Project number three is a bit of a challenge. The supplies for project number three were pretty out of the box, but I have a really neat idea that I think is really gonna work. Let's look at the supplies for project three. I don't know about your garage, but our garage has lots of these empty screw containers from all of the large projects we worked on, especially when we built that huge studio space last spring, we used so many screws. So it was pretty easy for me to find these in our garage. So we have two different sizes because we've bought an abundance of screws. So these containers are pretty much useless other than throwing things in your garage in them. But I'm gonna make them really beautiful using a few other DIY items that I have around the studio space and some duct tape. I bet you can't guess what these are gonna turn into. The first thing I did was took off a little sleeve of this duct tape. I wanted to create a triangular little flag that was going to go in the end result of these little clear container DIY that I was going to do. And because I knew I would have to wait for the spray paint on these to dry, I wanted to do these before the next step. I decided to use a little bit of soil that I had around since I love having plants in the house. I always have an abundance of extra soil. I wanted to fill the bottom of these so that I could create some little succulent, no water planters that I could then give later as a gift or just keep as a home decor piece. And so I filled them with soil, then added some rocks and then the addition of some really cute faux succulents that I had on hand to create these planters. Then I took those little gold flags that I made and put, I'm a sucker for you. Just a really cute little punny phrase to put on a succulent planter. For DIY number four, we're going to use a little bit of the scrap wood that's left and one of these little wood pincher clamps. We have a million of these in various sizes, but I chose the smallest one for this project. I reached for that pine minwax stain again to coat the backing of what was going to be a little grocery list sign. I knew that I could spray paint that clamp gold and attach it to this using again my Silhouette Cameo to create a really cute stencil that just says grocery list, a really easy DIY project that would be a great addition to any kitchen space. For DIY number five, we're going to make use of these very traditional terracotta pots. Every garage has these in different sizes and we're going to turn them into something useful today. And we're going to use these tile spacers. To create easy painting on terracotta pots, you wanna make sure that you add a little bit of plaster of Paris to your paint. This creates a DIY chalk paint causing your paint to dry a lot faster. The good thing is terracotta pots usually soak up paint pretty easily. So if you don't have that on hand, no problem. Then I preheated my hot glue gun and started gluing a pattern of tile spacers onto the bottom of the pods. I thought it was a really cute 3D added texture. I had painted lots of terracotta pots before, but never really attached anything on them to create this type of pattern. I think they turned out really cute. Isn't it amazing that we took literally a pile of nothing, just things that would either end up staying in the garage for years or probably one day ending up in the landfill and we were able to turn them into five amazing DIYs that anyone would be proud to have in their house. I think these all turned out so cute and even many of these ideas could be used to make little homemade gifts for someone else, like especially these little planters with the fake succulents here. I think it's adorable and a win-win. You don't even have to water them. Super cute little storage containers, a really adorable little phrase banner sign that you could really put any phrase you possibly could think of on. I think all of these ideas are really clever. I wanna know in the comments section, what is an item that you would find in your dad's garage? Inspire others in the comments section to think outside of the box on items they can use to upcycle for their own DIY projects. Also, I'm dying to know, which one of these was your favorite project in today's video? So if you like this video, leave a like, and if I hit 3,000 likes on this video, I'll continue this series and do another Trash to Treasure mystery box challenge. See you on the next video.